So this is a part of the service where we go out and greet each other and sing our family song. Family, we are family. Jesus, he is our God. And I'm so glad he's brought us all together. I'm so glad that the Father is our God. Family, we are family. Jesus, He is our God. And I'm so glad He's brought us all together. I'm so glad that the Father is our God. Family, we are family. Jesus, He is our God. And I'm so glad He's brought us all together. I'm so glad that the Father is our God. One more time. Family, we are family. Jesus, He is our God. And I'm so glad He's brought us all together. I'm so glad that the Father is our God. Now for our opening song, I'm going to sing Heart of Worship. When the music fades, all is stripped away. And I simply come Longing just to bring Something less of worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself It's not what you have required you search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you 
It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. King of endless word, no one can express how much you deserve. Though my weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself, it's not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart, and I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Well, I'd like to say good morning to everyone. <laughs> you know, we must always be prepared to change plans. Amen. And so this morning, I came out behind the church early, about 6.30 in the morning. And uh, the sun was just beginning to shine, and it was, it was, it was just going to be beautiful. <laughs> so um, I even had my Hawaiian shirt on and everything. I was ready. <laughs> I went home, took a shower, and uh, got ready. Then I <laughs> looked outside, and... The sun was gone. And so, um, so as, you can, as you can see, we canceled the uh, service outside. But um, we're so grateful to God that we have an opportunity to worship, amen? amen? Whether it's here or there, we should always be in an attitude of worship. I want to thank God because um, the, uh, the young people stepped up to the plate and uh, they were ready. We're going to sing these songs outside. And so uh, we sang them inside. So thank you so much for, for uh, doing that for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We have uh, just a couple of announcements. Oh, by the way, today we don't have a computer, you know, because everything was going to be outside. So I hope you don't mind that I'm just going to use the Bible. Amen. Is that okay with you? <laughs> All right. So uh, we have a couple of announcements, um, and the announcements are in your bulletin, but... Uh, the uh, adventurers were supposed to have a bike ride today, but they are canceling that. Oh, that's too bad, right? Um, there is a possibility of having a, a walk or a hike after lunch today uh, at Old Mill Park. So if you're brave, you can come out, okay? Um, it just depends on the weather. Okay, so let's continue to pray for that. Um, I do have a couple of things that I'd like to uh, share with you. And um, yesterday, we had an opportunity to uh, travel to Baltimore and have 
the uh, funeral service or the memorial service, I should say, for uh, Deborah Reeves, which is uh, James Johnson's mother. And um, it, was, it was a beautiful service, beautiful celebration of life, remembrance of uh, Deborah and the person that she was. And um, she sleeps in the Lord. And that's our hope, right? That when Jesus comes again, all those who have died in Christ are going to be raised up again. And so we just ask that you continue to pray for um, Jane's family. And um, also, um, I know we announced it uh, as well. Um, we had several losses here in our church. And that is Wanda Jones uh, lost his, uh, her mother um, a couple of weeks ago. So we need to... Uh, continue to remember uh, the Jones uh, family in our prayers. A um, couple of uh, prayer requests. Um, we have, um, I have actually have a message that I'd like to share with you that was sent to me. And uh, last Sabbath, we collected a special offering. Do you remember that, if you were here? Collected a special offering for a family that um, lost everything. Uh, in the uh, Dominican Republic, and um, Brother um, Munoz uh, is here, and uh, she actually sent uh, a thank, uh, thanks to you, so here it is, I'm going to read it to you, um, it's in Spanish, but I'll translate it, okay, it says, in moments like these, we're impacted by phenomenons that one way or another affects, affect our life. To receive the support of brothers and sisters that are moved by the Holy Spirit is a manifestation that God is our guide and our comforter in the midst of all these tribulations. As a family, we want to express our thanks to you for uh, supporting us and helping us. May God richly bless you so um so she just wanted to this is patricia ortiz all right so she just wanted to thank uh, the church for helping last sabbath and uh, so we want to thank everybody for doing that um i want to take the, the opportunity to uh, welcome our guest this morning and um do we have any guests with us this morning anyone Raise your hand. Okay, we have a couple right here. All right. Thank you so much. Keep your hand up. And then we have another couple right here in the front. The one in the very back. Okay. A young man in the back. Keep your hand up. Andy. All right. Okay. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. We also want to thank our guests who are watching via the internet online. God bless you all. And uh, also want to remind you that uh, right after, oh, here we go. Right after the uh, service, we have a fellowship meal. And it's a haystack dinner. Now, um, you know, when I first came to, into the church, when I heard the word haystack, I thought about hay, you know. And I said, well, you know, I am vegetarian, but I don't know if I'm ready just to eat just hay, you know. And so when I, I said, I want to see what it is. So they showed it to me. I said, oh, it's just like a taco salad. Okay. <laughs> I can deal with that one. All right. So um, if you raise your hand already, uh, that's, that's fine. So Karen Sanchez, Karen Sanchez here. Karen, right there. All right. So keep your hand up. Did you receive a... A gift already? Not yet. It's coming to you right there. All right. And then uh, we called for Andy from Rose from Boston, right? God bless you. And uh, we also have Debbie. Debbie, right there. Okay. From uh, Montana. Okay. Well, Debbie is not a stranger to us. And um, she's visiting for... For a little bit. Okay. So God bless you. Anyone else? Okay. All right. I do have a couple of things, a uh, couple of prayer requests. Uh, one is um, 
I'd like to invite uh, Brother Carl Camacho to come up to the front at this time. Brother Carl is one of our elders here in our church. And um, some of you may or may not know that um, Brother Carl has a physical condition that just, um, he just found out about uh, just a, a few days ago. And um, we just want to put him in prayer. And um, I'd like to invite um, the elders who are here uh, to come up. And we're going to make a circle of prayer. And uh, those of you who are here, uh, if you're able to kneel together with us as we, uh, as we pray for uh, Brother Carl. So just kneel right here in the middle. Our brother, we know that the Lord is right here. We know that God understands everything that happens in our life. And Father, we, um, <clears throat> we want to place our brother Carl in your hands. You know his uh, physical condition, Lord. But we know that you're the God of all power. We trust in you. We believe in you. You promise, Lord, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. You promise that when we walk to the fire, you will be with us, Lord. You will not be burnt. And so, Father, in that promise, we trust and we rest. As we place our hands upon our brother this morning, we do it in faith. We do it believing that you are the God who hears, the God who heals, the God who understands. And so, Lord, we just want to lift Brother Carl in prayer. Bless him, Lord. Bless his family. Give them faith and courage, Lord. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you, Pastor. All right, we'll continue with our program as is listed in the bulletin. Before I forget, um, we do have another announcement, and that is from the um, Spanish church that meets in the gym. And they have an event that is uh, free, and it is a health fair that is, they're having tomorrow at Old Mill Park. And that is going to be held from 2 to 5.30. Uh, they're going to provide uh, massages, they're going to take uh, blood pressure, glucose levels, um, and uh, some other things as well. So um, that is tomorrow from 2 to 5.30 at Old Mill Park. God bless you. We'll ask our little lambs to come forward as, as they lift the uh, orphans just before the children's story. All of our little lambs. So pull out those dollar bills and loose change just weighing down your pocket and put it on in there. Thank you so much.
Is that all the children? I think, maybe. Jair's not sure today. All right. All right, so we got a smaller crowd, I'm sure, because people thought we're going to be outside in this chilly, rainy weather, right? Probably. Well, good morning. How's everybody doing? You doing good, Catherine? Good. Yeah. You doing good, Jameson? All right. Good to see you guys. Good to see you, too. Good job on guitar last week. Show off. That was pretty good. All right. Well, children's story time. So I want to tell you something. Uh, when I was younger, my older brother and I, so... Unfortunately, we grew up in a uh, family that mom and dad didn't live together, so we were that kind of family. So some, there's families like that, but my older brother and I, we would have to go visit my dad, and we'd go, we'd go visit my dad. And my dad, he, he wasn't really uh, fortunate in having the best of cars. So the first car that I remember was a brown, it was really like a, a bad, awfully mustardy, a little bit darker brown colored dart. I'm not sure if you guys know what one of those is. Do you guys remember what one of those are? Yeah, it was a really bad car. And uh, so the story is really about the brown dart, but he also had a blue pacer, if you know what a blue pacer is. So that was the next winner. And uh, e equally just as good for uh, me and my brother. So uh, I'll tell you the story about the dart because what we did for the dart, we had to do for the pacer. So. My older brother and I, we were with my dad, and uh, we, were at the, we were at the boys' club, and the, uh, the car, it wouldn't start. So we probably should have just named it Wouldn't Start instead of Brown Dart, because it wouldn't start ever. And one of the things we had to do with this car is we had to push it. <laughs> so my, my dad and I got outside, and we, we started pushing. And at the time, I was probably a little bit younger than you were, Danielle. Uh, so I pushed a lot of cars in my day, so I think that's why I got the strong legs. But, so my, my dad and I, we're outside and we're pushing, we're pushing this car, and we're pushing, and we're trying to get it going, because the only way we could get the car started is we had to push it enough, while my older brother, who is almost four years older than me, he was in the front seat, and as we pushed, my older brother had to go ahead and turn it, and pump it, and turn it, and pump it, and try to gig it, gig it, gig it, and we're still pushing. Nothing. We're still pushing. Giga, giga, and he's doing this. And how about now? How about now? And all of a sudden, we heard this. That brown dart took off. And me and my dad were like this. We didn't know what to do because that brown dart was way down there. And we could not catch up. We were running, trying to catch up. We're like, wait. And my, my older brother, he was maybe 10 years old. And he just went. He just blew down the road. And so here we are, we're running from the boys club, and we kept running, and we lost, we lost sight of them. The, the weather that day was foggy out, so we could only see a little bit, and after that, we lost them. It was like a, like a Scooby-Doo mystery. We didn't know where he we went. And we kept running, we kept running, and we were tired, and for me, my heart was like, oh my goodness, what happened? And my dad, I don't know what he was thinking, but I'm thinking it was the same thing. So we were running like Forrest Gump. We were running. And we just kept running. <laughs> we're trying to find him. And we were looking to see. And all of a sudden, we came up. It was about a mile down the road. And there, inside a gas station on a corner of the street, there's this ugly brown dart in the middle of the fog. And we're like, <sighs> he didn't get in an accident. Because we that was one of the things of, he's going to crash. He's 10 years old, never drove before. But somehow he was smart enough. I don't know how he figured it out. I was that he, he earned cool points for me. There he was in the parking lot of this gas station. And the gas stations up in Massachusetts are very small. You don't get a lot of space there. So here he is. He's in this little corner area, and all the windows are all fogged up. And we tap on it, and there he is. And the look on his face was like, like he left a gift. Let's just say. So it was one of those. It was one of the coolest things, but one of the scariest things, and we could never tell mom when we went back home. <laughs> but that was our life growing up, is we always had to push that car, and it was one of those, we needed help at that time, and I don't know if, you, if, if they're able to come up. But anyway, so can you see what that is? Who knows what that is? A tow truck, right? We needed a tow truck, it seemed like, every time we went over to my dad's house, we needed, whether it was that brown dart or it was the blue pacer, 
we had another time with the blue pacer where we were trying to push it and my brother started it and he ran over somebody's mailbox. <laughs> anyway, we had, a lot of, we had a lot of events that happened trying to push my dad's car to get back to his apartment so we could get home. But uh, we need to help. We need to help. And sometimes you got to call for that tow truck, right? Sometimes we need to just reach out and call for help and we don't. But why do you think that car had troubles? Why do you think it had troubles? Why do you, why do you think a car breaks down? What do we, sometimes it's old, but what do we have to do with it? You got to change the batteries. What else? You got to put gas in it. What else do you have to do to keep a car going? What? You got to change the spark plugs. You got to make sure they're clean, right? So that's called maintenance, right? Just like us. If we don't, if, if we, if we don't take care of our car, right, it's going to break down. Even a brand new car if we don't change the oil, if we don't get a check, and I know they say first it's every 3,000, then it's every 5,000, eventually we'll never have to get a check like that, but there's some kind of means, right? But if we don't check the car, things break down. The tires, when they're worn out, tires will go pop and get flat, right? There are things that we have to do. Think about the car and think about sometimes we gotta, sometimes, sometimes if we don't get help, sometimes if we don't do the maintenance that we have to do on our car, we have no choice, and somebody's going to have to come help us, right? Well, that's the way our life is. When you think about our life, think about what we do. Our, our, our lives are built around who? They're built around God, right? And in order to have our lives built around God, what do we have to do? What do you do now? When you come into church on Sabbath, what's the first thing we come into? What do we start with? You have Sabbath class, right? You have Sabbath school. And what do you do during the week before you come to Sabbath school? You have devotionals, right? We have devotionals. We have scripture reading. And what do we do with our parents? We pray. We pray. Remember Daniel? Daniel prayed how many times? Daniel prayed three times, right? So think, think about that time. You know, think about all the times that Daniel, when he's home, when he was home, and he, played, he prayed three times a day. And we know he prayed more than that. But that's what we say three times a day. We know we prayed. How many times do you pray? Do you pray for your meals? How many times do we eat? Three times. Do you pray when you wake up? That's four times. Do you pray during the day? That's more times. And then at night, do you pray? We pray more than three times, don't we? And sometimes there are those times that we think about, you know, I've got a test today. I really need to do better. Or I have a friend that's sick. I'm going to pray for them. We pray a lot, don't we? But sometimes, sometimes we, we know that praying our, to maintain ourselves and to be uh, in a special relationship for ourselves with God, we have to do more than praying. We have to open up what? Huh? Well, yes, you do have to open up your hearts, but you also have to open up the Bible, don't you? And, excuse me. Yeah, so one second here. So think, think about if we don't do the maintenance on our personal lives, right, just like the health part, if we don't eat right, our bodies break down. If we stay up late all the time and we don't get the right sleep, our bodies break down. Go ahead. So you're getting a head start on PVE? Oh, there you go. So you're going to be ready, aren't you? Uh-oh. We want to watch out for him. We're going to have to pick up our game, right? So we, have to, we, have, we do have to study. We have to spend time with God. If we're going to maintain our spiritual life with God, we have to do that. But also, when times are in trouble, what do we have to remember to do? We have to pray, right? And sometimes, sometimes, if this was so heavy, right, who knows about Thor? Can you imagine, can you imagine if this is Thor's hammer? Imagine this is Thor's hammer, and I'm not Thor. I can't pick it up. I need Thor's help to pick it up, right? In life, sometimes there are things that we're praying, we're asking God for help. We have to do that. We can't do it on our own. And we've seen in the Bible where people wanted to do it alone and people didn't get help, people didn't do the maintenance, people didn't take time to take care of themselves, to get the sleep, the food. They didn't take care of each other. And when we do that, we fall apart, don't we? Don't we find sometimes where we, we kind of close ourselves off and we kind of push people away? It makes things even harder. We need people. We need God, don't we? We've, we can't just do it on our own. And 
when you think about when you think about that tow truck, that tow truck came because we either asked for help or we waited until it's too late. And then somebody said, you need to pull that piece of junk out of here, right? Sometimes that happens. We don't want to let ourselves come to that. So we have to do something else. If I can get that next one. God knew we, he knew that we needed help. Years ago, before you and I were even around, God knew that we needed help. And he sent who? He sent his son, Jesus. And I thought, isn't it something that all the stuff that we didn't even know we needed help for, God knew long before us. And it's okay to ask for help. God knew it, and God sent his only son, didn't he? Because there are some times that we're so troubled, and we're so troubled that we don't see our own problems right before our eyes. It's okay to ask for help, okay? I want you to think of this. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence come my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. You can always go to him. You can always take time and ask him, but don't wait till it's too late. Okay? Don't ever, don't ever wait and go it alone. You have friends to the left and right of you. Ask your sisters, your brothers. Ask your friends. Ask your parents, your teachers. We all need help at some point, okay? Go to Jesus first and ask him. Can we do that? Do you understand how important it is that we, we, we use each other and we always seek God's help? Yeah? Can I get somebody to pray? Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Please help us to notice the things that we need to do better in in our life. And if we um, know that we are doing the wrong things and we just keep on doing it, please help us to stop it and um, follow your ways. And thank you for everything you've given us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Thank you very much. You all can go back to your seat. Well, our deacons come forward to lift the morning's uh, tithing offering. Lord, we thank you for an opportunity to give back to you, return to you a tithe and, and a faithful offering. Bless those who, who, who give and, and those who uh, seek to do better. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we may not be smiling, but there are some things that are smiling this morning. The vegetables in my raised garden bed in the back of the um, group home is smiling. And I'm smiling too as I watch those leaves get bigger and bigger. Because right, eventually some, some of that good food is going to come to the table if God is willing. Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again, and I'll receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. No more rain, nothing but sunshine and smiles. So you can brighten up the day too just by smiling.
We're going to prepare now for our season of prayer. Those of you who um, have things you want to bring to the altar, just might want to come up here and say, Lord, thank you. You've been so good to me. Might want to come up and pray for somebody special. Come up and pray for the Johnson family, the Jones family, uh, for our church family. We want to try to remember Robert Little John this morning as he's, uh, I think he's taking care of his father. Remember him as he, he uh, reaches out to uh, care for his dad. And we're going to go into a season of prayer this time. Father, we are so glad and so happy that we can call you Father. Lord, we beg your forgiveness for any sin. Anything we have said, done, or thought that would block our prayers from being heard this morning. And we say thank you, Lord, for every, for every raindrop. Lord, we so need the rain. It may not always make us smile, but Lord, we, we need the rain, and we thank you for it. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for a church that we can still come and bow on our knees, fathers, and say thank you and make our request known to you. And we pause to say thank you for every prayer you've answered. Father, there are things that you have done for us that we don't, we're not even aware of, but we, we pause to say thank you for every mercy, for every blessing. And we bring our petitions to you because you say come. Uh, bring our burdens, Father, and leave them here. So, Lord, after we say thank you for all your mercies, Father, we bring our, uh, our families before you. We bring the um, Jones family before you, Father. Even after the funeral and repass is all done, Father, the grieving process sometimes takes a while. And, Lord, we pray that you would be with those families. Remember the Johnson family, Father. We're so thankful that beautiful uh, funerals that we go to, that we hear about our loved ones who died in you. Even though we are sad when they leave, Father, we know that one day we will see them again. And Lord, today we pray for little, uh, for little John, Father, and his father as he care for him. We pray for all of our uh, uh, sick, Father, who are on our prayer list, Father. We pray that you will reach out and touch each of them according to their needs and according to your will, Father. Sometimes we're afraid to pray for your will, but Lord, we, you, 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 you're all about saving us, Father. And sometimes things that happen to us is just to get our attention, sometimes to bring us back to you, Father. And Lord, we, we just pray for your will to be done because we know that you do all things good. Lord, we pray especially for our pastor this morning and his family. Uh, as they lead out in this church, Father, we pray for his three children in a special way. As we pray for all of our children here in this church, we know that the devil seeks to destroy them, Father, and to lead them astray. But, Lord, we cry out for our children that you will put a hedge about each of them, Father. And, Lord, keep them safe, Father. Lord, we pray for every man, every woman about here today. We pray for the requests that, that, that are, are brought forward today. We pray that you will honor them according to your will. And Lord, we, um, we pray for the message that will take place today. We pray that even though the clouds are, that, are, are, are hovering over, that Father, the words that you place on our pastor's heart will, 
bring the sunshine and we will feel the sun shining in here. We pray for your Holy Spirit to take full control of our service, Father. We pray for every demon and every evil spirit to be driven out of this place that we might feel you and hear you and be touched by the songs and the prayers and the, and the music and the message today. And Lord, we pray for all of those who are watching by satellite. Uh, we, we pray that they too will feel your presence and your touch. And Lord, when all is said and done, we continue to give you glory and praise. Lord, we pray for our nation. We, we pray for, for all of the things that are going on today in this world. We know that you are so soon to come, Father, and we ask that you will help us to, to be aware of what is going on in the nearness of the time. And Father, that we may prepare ourselves and our hearts to meet you in peace. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you for hearing. Amen. If you have your Bibles, our scripture reading will be taken from Psalms 119, 19, I'm sorry, Psalms 19, I don't know how I got 119, but we got it right, Psalms 19 verses 1, 2, and 3. If you have it, I'll read it in your hearing. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament show his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night reveal his knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voices are not heard. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one. Bring many sons to glory. 
Behold the man upon the cross My sin upon his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice A call out among the scoffers It was my sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished I will not boast in anything No gifts, no power, no wisdom But I will boast in Jesus Christ His death and resurrection Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom Thank you very much, Daniel, for that song. It's a reminder that um, the reason why we're here it's because of Jesus Christ. Amen? So um, at this time, I'd like to just uh, remind us to pray in a special way for Robert Littlejohn as the, um, he lost his wallet, and he is supposed to travel back from Arizona to here today with uh, no money and no ID. So um, pray. Uh, for that. kind of chuckled this morning because um, as I was talking to Lucas, I think it was, he came up to me and he said, I want to have rain church. <laughs> and I said, what? I want to have rain church, which means have church in the rain. <laughs> and I said, well, that would be good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, um, hey, maybe one of these days we can have rain church, okay? All right. Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day, for your blessings. Thank you, Father, for the privilege of prayer, the fact that we can come to you in Jesus' name and that you are you are here, you're listening. We pray, Lord, for the Holy Spirit to come in a mighty way and speak to each of our hearts. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. No computer. <laughs> there is something majestic about 
walking out and looking up at the sky on a clear night. Have you ever done that before? Yeah, it's, it's just amazing. And you know, I have, um, I was brought up in a small town, no traffic lights, and, and you, could, you could just walk into the backyard and look up at the sky and see everything. But then we moved to Los Angeles, a big metropolis, a lot of lights. <laughs> and on top of that, you have the smog. You can see the stars sometimes after it rains. Is that true? Right there. This Mark right there from California. On this particular night, I was, I was 18 years old, and I, I received a, a special scholarship to go to Massachusetts for the summer. And uh, this was to be one of the turning points in my life. And I received it. I mean, I didn't expect it. I was not a good student per se, but somehow I was chosen to go from my school. Over 3,000 students, and uh, I, they put me on an airplane, and I made my way to Massachusetts. Springfield, Massachusetts. I think you know where that is, right? All right. So um, I got there, and uh, there were students from all over the country, and yes, from all over the world. Mount Hermon Summer School. And by the way, Mount Hermon Summer School was founded by the late D.L. Moody, Dwight L. Moody. And uh, he founded the school to prepare young men and women for service in, uh, in the world and in the church. And so um, I didn't know that until years after. But that particular summer, I was confronted by these students who had plans for their life, unlike my friends who didn't have any plans at all. In fact, some of them said, why go to school? <laughs> why finish high school? You're wasting your time. And so um, these students were different. They, were, they said, uh, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a teacher. I want to travel the world. And so I was impressed by that. And, and so they asked me, what do you want to be? <laughs> and I said, well, I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out. And so one of the classes that I took was astronomy. And so for, for astronomy, we had to go uh, at night. And uh, the teacher would set up the telescope, and we would look at the moon. And, and, uh, and I remember looking at the moon, and we would look at Saturn and uh, Jupiter. What I thought were stars were actually planets. And Venus. And so uh, I was impressed by that. And so one night... After everybody left, I walked out in the, in the, um, out in the, in the yard, in the open, and uh, Springfield, Massachusetts is not very big. And the, 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 the school sits not in Springfield per se, but outside of Springfield, and uh, there, is, there are no lights there. And so I, I lie down in, on the grass, and, and I looked up. And, and I saw the stars, and I was impressed by the majesty of God, the majesty of heaven, even though I didn't know God at that time. And so I looked up, and I remember saying a prayer. In my own way, I prayed. And I said, God, hello, it's me. <laughs> if you're there... I want you to show me the plans that you have for my life. Because I don't know. I want you to tell me. And so, I said that prayer. And there was no angel that came down and said, this is what you must do. <laughs> you know? No light from heaven that shone on, in, in the, in, you know, in the, uh, at the night there where I was laying there. There was nothing. There was silence. 
But little did I know that God was already answering my prayer. Because you see, we serve a God who, who knows what we're going to say even before we say it. Who has the answer coming to you even before you think the answer is coming. Because when I got, when I got back to Los Angeles, my brother, my younger brother Herman, I call him Herman the monster, <laughs> Herman said to me, hey, a teacher from your school that you had some years back came looking for you. And I said, well, what's his name? His name is Mr. Smith. I said, Mr. Smith? Why would he come looking for me? I don't know. He says that he wants to talk to you. And so I said, okay, so, uh, so what did he say? Well, he said he's coming back today because I told him you were coming today. So I... I said, okay, fine. A few hours later, there was a knock at the door. Mr. Smith was there. And he said, Luis, because my middle name is Luis. At Oakwood, they called me Louis, okay? Luis, he says, it's so good to see you. He says, it is time for you to know the plans that God has for your life. I almost fell out. I was, I was like, I was shocked. I thought he was some kind of a wizard because I said, how did he know? I didn't tell anyone. The only one that knew was God. And so I, I didn't say anything for a while. And, I, and, and he says, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm fine. He says, well, it is time for you to know the plans that God has for your life. I want to invite you to come to some meetings that I'm having at the church at the corner. And I said, okay, I'll go. And I went to the meetings, and four months later, I was baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist church. Amen. 18 years old. There is something majestic about the stars because they reveal something they tell something something about God I want you to open your Bibles with me to Psalm 19 verses 1 beginning at verse 1 Psalm 19 at verse 1 if you're watching via the internet open your Bibles and follow along with me Okay, so Psalm 19, verse 1. This is what the Bible says. The heavens declare the glory of God. In other words, when you and I look at the stars, when you and I look at the universe, there is, there is a message that is given. There is, there is something that is said, that, it, that is declared. It says, the heavens declared the glory of God. And I don't know about you, but compared to the universe, we are super, super, super small. Compared to the, to the sun, per se. <laughs> we are small. And the sun, by the way, is, is one of the smallest stars that there are or that there is in the universe. And we are just part of the billions and billions of galaxies in the universe. You see, Einstein was right when he said, there is too much perfection in the universe that I see. There is too much design for there not to be a God. Einstein, bright mind, that's what he said. In fact, God has, he has two books, did you know that? God has two books 
in which he reveals his will, his power. Revelation of God comes from two books. The first book that we have is God's Word, the Bible. And I'm glad that we have the Bible, amen? You know, there are some places in the world where uh, Christians are persecuted, and it is against the law to, to be a Christian, that uh, they don't have Bibles. In fact, uh, I think last year I saw a video of uh, some Chinese believers. They, they, they're meeting in a house, and, and somebody's videotaping this. It's all shaken. It's not very clear, but they're videotaping this, and somebody brings in a, a suitcase, and everybody's excited as to what's in that suitcase. And so they open the suitcase, and, and, and lo and behold, there's, there is no clothes in the suitcase. There are Bibles in Chinese. And they, they, they take those Bibles, and they, they kiss the Bibles, and they, they cry. They're holding the Bible for the first time in their life. Precious. Have you ever thought about the privilege that you and I have living here in this country? What we still have, still have freedom? This is not part of my message, but let me just say this. More and more, you're seeing the beginnings of what is to happen. Just this week, a couple of days ago, there was a, an executive order signed, eroding little by little, chipping away at the, what we know as the separation between church and state. Meaning that is, it is now okay for, um, for churches to um, participate in the political dialogue and process that happens in, in our country. Now, praise God that there is that separation. You're never going to hear me saying, vote for this guy as opposed to voting for this other guy or this other person. But we should be aware of what is happening, the implications of what is taking place in our country in light of Bible prophecy. How precious is God's word in your eyes? How do you answer that question? Think about it this way. How much time do we spend reading God's first book, the Bible? How much time do we invest in knowing God through his word? Sometimes we know all the characters of a certain game better than we know the characters of the Bible. Noah, who was that? There are two books that God has in which he reveals his will. The first book is the Bible. In fact, all that we need for salvation... The GPS. <laughs> Thank God for GPS. When we traveled yesterday to Baltimore, I kept getting rerouted because of the traffic. You can save three minutes if you take the next route. So I would go off. Faced with traffic again. You can save one minute if you go this way. <laughs> we need not to be lost. When we follow God's word, amen? amen? When we follow the Bible. Here it is, all that we need. In fact, I want to share with you, keep your finger there, in uh, Psalm 19. Come with me to, to the New Testament, 2 Timothy, 
chapter 3 and verse 16. That's easy to remember, amen? 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Just like John 3.16, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. See, this is God's GPS. This is all that we need. Amen? All that we need for this, this journey that we're on, all of us, all, we're on uh, to the city of God. The Bible says in verse 16, all scripture is given by what? Inspiration. Of God and is profitable for what? For doctrine. What does the word profitable mean? It is good, right? There are some benefits that you and I get, amen, from reading God's word. So here are the benefits it is profitable for, for doctrine. You know, there are people that don't know what they believe. Some people say, you know, we don't need more doctrine. I would say we need the correct doctrine. Amen? Amen? It is profitable for what? For doctrine. If you want to know what God says about a subject, it is in here. Amen? In God's word. So it's, it's profitable for doctrine for what? For reproof, for correction, for instruction in what? In righteousness. You see, Apart from God's word, apart, apart from God, we're all headed in the wrong direction. We don't know where we're going. And so we need, we need God's word to, to what? To guide us. We need, we need God's GPS, amen? This is where you must go. This is, this is where you should go. For reproof, the Bible says, for correction, for instruction in what? In righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped, or furnished, as the King James says, for every good work. God's first book, the Bible. And in our church, praise God for, for the early pioneers of our church who spent countless hours studying God's word. Amen? Amen. They used to have what they called Bible conferences. You know, the, the result of those conferences was the doctrines that we have today. It wasn't like somebody says, hey, you know what? I think we need a doctrine that says this and this. No, they, they spent time in God's Word and prayer, reading God's Word, studying God's Word, comparing text to, to text, and coming up with a collection of what we know today as the doctrines that we have today. How much time do we spend reading the first book that God gives us? Equally important is God's second book, nature. We cannot correctly understand nature apart from the Bible. See, there are people who are, who are bright, who study the heavens, you know, the scientists, and, and they study the mysteries of the human body and, and the mysteries of the ocean and, and all those things. And, and they come, apart from God, they come to the wrong conclusions. In fact, that's what happened to Mr., um, what was his name, the one that started evolution? Darwin. I'm glad you're paying attention. Right? Apart from God, apart from God's word, he came to the wrong conclusion. So, it says here in verse 1, Psalm 19, verse 1, going back, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmaments show his what? His handiwork. There is, there is something, I don't know if you, I don't know if you have, if you have looked into the um, Hubble Telescope website. Beautiful. 
Just amazing. The majesty of the galaxies out there. Amazing. They show, the Bible says, his handiwork. Verse 2, day unto day utter speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out throughout all the earth and their words to the end of the world. Do you know that Jesus himself used God's second book, Nature, to explain the things of God? In fact, Jesus not only had church inside the synagogue, inside the temple, but many times he had church outside. In fact, have you heard of the Sermon on the Sermon on the Mount? One of his, you might say, one of his first discourses or sermons that Jesus preached was not in the synagogue. It was out in nature, right? Matthew chapter 5, 6, and chapter 7. Come with me. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 1. All right? Very quickly. See how God used God's second book. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. It says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up on the mountain. Was it inside or outside? Outside. outside. <laughs> he went up on the mountain, and he was, when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth, verse 2, and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. The Beatitudes, right? Chapter 5. He continues on chapter 6 and also on chapter 7. In fact, Jesus, if you go to chapter 13, look at chapter 13 and verse 1. All right. Matthew 13, verse 1. It says, on the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea, verse 2, and great multitudes were gathered together to him so that he got into a boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. So he used a boat as his pulpit. All right? I know, you know, we are, we are creatures of habit, and sometimes, you know, when we... When we, uh, when we try to do some changes sometimes in the church, it's difficult. And we say, no, we don't want to do that. You don't want to move the pulpit because it is, it is you know, that's where it should be. <laughs> I came to a church one time in, in uh, Indiana, in a little town called Wolf Lake, Indiana. Only one traffic light. And uh, we were there for just, uh, just a few months, actually four months, as we began our ministry in the Indiana Conference. And uh, as we came to that church... Uh, one of the elders says, Pastor, I want to show you something. So we walked into the church, and I was, I was you know, waiting to see something, but I didn't know what it was. So he says, you see this right here? I said, yeah. He says, that is the pulpit. I said, okay. I said, yeah, I see. That's the pulpit. He said, no, but that's not an ordinary pulpit. This pulpit was used by none other then Ellen G. White. And I was like, oh my goodness, you know. <laughs> I didn't want to, you know, didn't want to touch it. But sometimes, you know, we, we get so much into doing things the same way that sometimes it's difficult to what? To change, right? Jesus used a boat as his what? His pulpit. And he preached. And he taught many things. In fact, some of the greatest teachings of Jesus were not found, not so much in the synagogue per se, even though there were many, but they were found, Jesus was outside in nature. 
talking about the parable of the sower, which, is, which follows, follows the, uh, the verses there, verses 3, all the way to verse 9. People were what? Familiar with those things. And then, if you look at verse, uh, chapter 15, go to chapter 15, verses 29. Okay? So, um, Matthew 15, 29. The Bible says, Jesus departed from there, skirted the Sea of Galilee, and went up on the mountain and sat down there. Then great multitudes came to what? Came to him, having with them the lame, the blind, the mute, the maimed, and many others. And they laid them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Where was he? Outside, right? Well, there's more. Have you heard of Matthew 24? The great, what we call the great Olivet Discourse, which was done on the Mount of Olives. The great prophecies that Jesus spoke of in, 24, in, in Matthew 24 were spoken from the Mount of Olives. Interesting, right? Now, that is not to say, and let me say this, let me bring some balance. That is not to say that we shouldn't come to church, amen? amen. Oh, the pastor said we should have church outside. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that Jesus had church outside as well as inside, amen? There is a reason why he went to the synagogue, because that's what God that's what God says. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Amen? And so on Sabbath morning, you would find Jesus where? In the synagogue. Sometimes there is a practice among us that we can do whatever we want on the Sabbath. It is not our day. It's God's day. Amen? Amen. Check it out in God's word. As to what he expects. Sometimes we find ourselves doing things on the Sabbath that we know that we shouldn't do. I want to encourage you to come to church. There is a reason why Jesus went to church. If Jesus went to church or to the synagogue on the Sabbath, why shouldn't we? Amen? Amen? There is a reason why Paul says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. There is a blessing when we come to church. Amen? Amen. All right. So God's second book is nature. There's a lot, a lot of things that we can say about nature, but one thing we know is that Jesus wants us to know the reason why he came. And the parables that he spoke and the teachings that he gave, there was a message there, there was a point, there was a purpose that he spoke of. The purpose of Jesus coming to this earth is outlined for us in Luke chapter 19 and verse 10. Luke 19.10. Very short. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was what? Which was lost. The question is, who is lost? We were lost. Amen? That's why he carried that heavy cross. It was heavy. <laughs> this morning, this cross was in the tent that we, we, were, we set up out there. And so preparing for the, uh, for the service that we were going to have out there, and by the way, Carrie, 
I think your dad made this, right? Carrie's dad made this. Isn't this beautiful? So, you made it. Okay. All right. Let's give credit where credit is due. Okay. All right. So, the cross was there in the tent. And so, I, I carry this cross up the hill over where it's supposed to be. And I, I, was, I, was, <laughs> I was getting tired, you know. And, um, and I thought about, I thought about what Jesus went through for us. Because you see, it wasn't just the, the weight of the cross. It wasn't just the weight of the cross. Even though it was heavy. In fact, somebody had to help Jesus. Simon, this, uh, Cyrene, had to help Jesus carry that cross because it was heavy. But that was not the only weight that he carried. It was the weight of the world, amen? The weight of every sin. Jesus carried that for us. And he carried that for you. So I trust that in every book of the Bible, in every verse, that you find Jesus. I trust that as you look at the heavens, that you, that you are in awe of God's power. And how great is his love, higher than the, than the heavens, his mercy. Is for us. Amen. I pray that you see a Savior who is always waiting, who is always calling, who's always listening to your prayers, even when you think he's not. Even when, when you believe that no one is hearing your voice, God is hearing you. Because he certainly heard me. See the prayer that I prayed? God had a plan, amen? amen? He had a plan. He had all planned out. God put me in touch with his teacher, and it was through his witness that I was able to come to know Jesus Christ. And it is through him that I am here today. But we are heading somewhere, amen? I want to go to heaven. Don't you? Amen? How many of us say, I want to go to heaven? Count me in. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we are grateful to you, Lord, for the two books that you have left us. Thank you, Lord, for your word, the Bible, the scriptures. Help us, Lord, to study. Not to study just for the sake of knowledge, but to study for the sake of knowing you. What is it that you want for us, Lord? What plans do you have for our life? What plans do you have for our church? So we pray for that, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your second book, The Universe, Nature. Help us, Lord, to study nature in light, of, in, light of, in light of your word. Help us to see the majesty of your power and your love. And help us all to remember, Lord, that the purpose for the coming of Jesus is to save us. Because... He gave his life. He carried that cross. He took the beating. He took those nails. He put on that crown of thorns upon his head. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And amen.
Let us stand and sing uh, our closing song, Give Us Clean Hands. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees, O oh, Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things. O oh, Lord, we cast down our idols. So give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. And God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face, O God of Jacob. And God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face, O God of Jacob. We bow our hearts. We bow our hearts. We bend our knees. O Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things. Oh Lord, we cast down our idols. Give us clean hands. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. And God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face, O God of Jacob. And God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face, O God of Jacob. So give us clean hands, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. So give us clean hands, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face, O God of Jacob. And God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face, O God of Jacob. Amen. Once again, we are grateful because you love us, Lord. All that we see in nature testifies of your power, testifies of your grace. And we pray, Lord, that we may study the two books that you have left us. Help us, Lord, to appreciate the great sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross for us. Help us, Lord, to surrender our lives to him, to follow him. Now, Lord, dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Just a reminder, we have a fellowship meal that has been prepared for all of you in the gym, and uh, we have some good food. God bless you. <laughs>